These are the characters that had us at hello. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 character introductions in teen movies. Juno? No, it's Morgan Freeman. Do you have any bones that need collecting? For this list, we're looking at films that focus on teens and young adults, and the significant ways in which the characters from them make their first impressions on the audience. So, that's Ramona. Yeah. Okay, I'm jealous. You're jealous? I'm allowed. Number 10, meet Juno McGuff, Juno. It started with a chair. In this coming of age comedy, we meet Juno, a seemingly normal teenager, as she's captivated with an old recliner chair that she got physical on with her friend Polly. Wicked tiger, he looks proud. The unique character, with her sarcastic and witty humor, deserves an introduction that's just as unique as she is, and director Jason Reitman gives her just that. Whether that be her drinking Sunny D straight out of the carton or her distinctive lingo, Juno's intro perfectly encapsulates her quirkiness and unconventionality. Third test today, Mama Bear. Your ego is prego. Number nine, meet Nadine Franklin and Krista, the edge of 17. My childhood had become a raging dumpster fire and I couldn't take one more second of this intolerable, unlivable nightmare Excuse of a- Excuse me. One of the central relationships in this film is the friendship between the protagonist Nadine and her best friend Krista. True to the nature of the comedy drama's coming of age genre, we get to see not only the beginning of Nadine's struggle to fit in, but also the origins of her relationship with Krista. It turned out Krista's life wasn't perfect oh, either. But we got each other through. <laughs> Portraying the pair's relationship through their introduction is central to the premise of the movie, as it allows us to better understand the betrayal felt by Nadine as their friendship is called into question. As well, the fact that Nadine and Krista's relationship was formed over a caterpillar showcases the odd and often hilarious ways children become friends. If you want, you could be his other mom with me. Really? Number eight, meet Olive Pendergast, Easy A. So here it is, part one. The shudder-inducing and cliched, however totally false, account of how I lost my virginity to a guy at a community college. This hilarious 2010 comedy follows high school student Olive Pendergast as she deals with the repercussions of lying about losing her virginity. This isn't one of those tales, though it sure started out that way. And then it changed pretty quickly when I started lying about some very personal things. Presented through her own first-person narration, Olive's introduction is unique from the other movies on this list as she speaks directly to the audience via webcam and provides the audience with a brief backstory of the film's events from her own perspective. Fun fact, Emma Stone, who plays Olive, got the role by sending a webcam recording of herself to director Will Gluck doing the opening monologue, which was similar to the one she does in the actual film. Let me just begin by saying that there are two sides to every story, and this is my side. The right one. Number seven, meet the actual blue, Love, Simon. Sometimes I feel like I'm stuck on a Ferris wheel. One minute I'm on top of the world and the next I'm at rock bottom. Over and over, all day long, because a lot of my life is great, but nobody knows I'm gay. Blue. Throughout this teen rom-com, we are plagued with the question of who is Blue, an anonymous user that frequently chats with Simon online, and who Simon begins to fall for. Unlike the other films on this list, we only properly meet Blue in person at the very ending of the film, which makes the reveal and introduction highly anticipated. Can I sit there? I was kind of waiting for somebody. Yeah, I know. Not only is the reveal unexpected, as it turns out to be Bram, a fellow high school student and acquaintance of Simon's, but it's also extremely heartwarming, as Simon finally meets the real Blue and they can now openly be together. It's kind of crazy, huh? I didn't think you'd come. Me neither. Until I was walking towards you, I, I didn't think I had it in me. Number six, meet the Toro cheerleading squad, bring it on. Presented to viewers through a cheerleading routine in a dream sequence that Kirsten Dunst's Torrance has, the Toro cheerleading squad has one of the most unconventional yet truly iconic intros in teen movie history. I'm strong and I'm loud. I'm gonna make you proud. I'm 
This iconic status comes from the film putting a central focus on the eccentric characters and their roles on the team, making the introduction one of the most memorable scenes of the entire comedy. And with the extremely catchy cheer performed throughout, there is no doubt we will be cheering right along with them. I'm on it. Number five, meet Gigi and Jared, book smart. Here comes the one percent. Money, I got money. This 2019 coming of age comedy follows best friends Amy and Molly as they come to the realization that they focus too much on their academics throughout high school and never really had fun. While Amy and Molly are the lead characters in Booksmart, the introduction of the characters Gigi and Jared is easily the most memorable, and arguably one of the funniest scenes of the entire movie. Not the cemetery or the penitentiary, damn my contemporaries, I'm too legendary. From the song Money by LaCaylee 47 playing in the background, to the peculiar paint job of Jared's car, and the dynamic between the two friends in this initial scene, it perfectly captures Gigi and Jared's relationship and eccentric personalities. I just got it back okay, from the shop. I'm napping. Number four, meet Danny Zuko and Sandy Olsen, Grease. I did, uh, I did meet this one chick. She was, uh, she was sort of cool. Like Bring It On, Grease also introduces characters Danny and Sandy in a totally unconventional way. We first meet the lovebirds as they both sing to their friends about their summer romance and how it ended in the song titled Summer Nights. Not only is this tune what puts Danny and Sandy here, it's also one of the most popular tracks to come out of the musical rom-com, reaching number five on the Billboard charts and topping UK charts for seven weeks. The pop number is also set to provide the premise for a prequel to the film that was announced in 2019 titled Summer Loving, and is set to focus on the couple's summer romance as described in the song. The Number three, meet the Breakfast Club, the Breakfast Club. While this teen comedy drama is mostly known for its ending monologue, director John Hughes can also be credited for the way he presented the film's main characters to the audience. We first meet the titular Breakfast Club as they're forced to spend their Saturday in detention, entering their school's library one by one. There is so much detail put into each character's entrance that it really establishes their relationship with each other and their individual personalities. Shown through their demeanor, the place they choose to sit when they first walk in, and their perceived attitudes towards being in detention, we can decipher the roles these differing characters will play in the film very early on. Well, well, here we are. Number two, meet the Plastics, Mean Girls. Where are the Plastics? They're teen royalty. If North Shore was Us Weekly, they would always be on the cover. The introduction of the Plastics is one of the many popular scenes to come out of this 2004 comedy. The most popular girls at North Shore High School are initially shown to us when they're being described by characters Janice and Damien to new girl Katie. Not only are we able to clearly see the group's social domination over the student body, we're also given some of the most iconic lines of the film. Regina George. How do I even begin to explain Regina George? In fact, the part of the scene showing the students' direct addresses to the camera, in which they talk about Regina George, was even referenced in Ariana Grande's Thank You Next music video. Ariana says, honest to God, knock me out. So I decided to punch myself in the face. It was awesome. I would love an epic intro sequence in the style of a teen movie for myself. And if I were going to do it, it would probably be a parody of our number one pick, which is iconic. That's why her hair is so big. It's full of secrets. Hey, 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 um, that one's going to be coming at you fast right after these honorable mentions. Heather. Sorry, Heather. How old are you now, Scott? Like 28? I'm not playing your little games, kids. So you've been out of high school for like 13 years. I'm 22. 22. You're dating a high school girl. Not bad, not bad. Thank you, thank you. Dear friend, I am writing to you because she said you listen and understand and didn't try to sleep with that person at that party even though you could have. Please don't try to figure out who I am. Time for school! Stop daydreaming! You'll be late for school! 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Meet Ferris Bueller, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. They bought it. This John Hughes-directed flick is known as one of the greatest teen movies of all time, due in large part to the pitch-perfect introduction of protagonist Ferris. The high schooler's narration to the camera lecturing us about school-skipping techniques and European socialism not only sets the tone for the rest of the film, but has also had a tremendous influence on the introduction of characters inside and outside of teen movies. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. The way we get to know Ferris has even extended to other films on this list, most notably Easy A, which not only mimics the breaking the fourth wall aspect, but also features Olive with a shampoo-styled mohawk singing into her showerhead. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.